Okay, here we are ready for part two. So now I'm going to go and open, going to file, open, and find the rug, and click open. Okay, so I am going to um, look at the resolution on this image. So my image size, I'm going to change it to inches. So it's nine inches. That's a good size. I'm going to change it to 300 dpi though. And again, it's by cubic smoother enlargement. So here's this rug. I'm going to introduce you to the magic wand. So it's the fourth tool down. Make sure that it looks like it's the magic wand and not these other two options, okay? Um, so I've got the magic wand. And what the magic wand does is when you click on something, change this to tolerance here for a moment. The tolerance default usually is 10. If I click on something, it selects everything in that color range. If I select this white, it's selecting all that white. If I select the white background here, it's doing a pretty good job of just selecting that white background. If I didn't have 10 here, if I had say 30 and I selected this background, notice the way it's feeding in here. So what happens is the magic wand goes and picks pixels that are the same color in, in either, if it's a tolerance of 10, it says, you know, 10 pixels similar in one direction, 10 pixels similar in the other direction. So if I make that tolerance higher, it's going to be reaching for more um, pixels. So sometimes you got to find that sweet spot of exactly what tolerance you want and 10 per, 10 tolerance is a good place to generally start um, when you're cleaning up something like this um, you know one thing i'm going to show you i'm going to jump back again for a moment um, to open up that original bench i want to show you how this tool works on the bench so notice how this bench has this drop shadow. You, you look at it and you think, oh, this is a white background, I'll just use the magic wand. Um, and so why don't you have us do that? It seems very simple. But what happens is you don't totally get um, all, all that's selected. Like, let me show you right here. Um, what, what can happen is it starts to give you these bands. See that banding? And then you can hold the shift key and select more and sometimes you get a nice banding sometimes you don't and then other times it can start to click in and get um, little bits in here um, it does look like it's working pretty well here and sometimes i might have used a tool for this but i also wanted to know two ways of doing this um, with the lasso tool and with the magic wand and this one is a nice clean option for doing the magic wand but again see if i use too high a tolerance, I have it at 30. It's starting to feed into here. And if I pick 10 and I click in here, it's doing a pretty good job. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see how some of the, um, some of these little white areas aren't being found. Um, for this project, that will be fine, but I'm also going to show you how to clean that up a little bit too if you want. Um, one of the things is you can try 12 as your tolerance and see how that does it. Mm -hmm. It maybe improved it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to delete that background now. But again, the first thing I need to do, if I were to hit delete right now, it says, do you want white, black, content aware? What is that? So that's happening because I have not. Um, clicked on the background beforehand to make it a transparent layer. So now it's a transparent layer and I can hit delete, okay? Now, you don't have to do it for this project, but I want you to, to know um, that you can go in and clean up some of these areas by going and grabbing that eraser tool. Um, so that eraser tool, remember we, we changed the size of it before, but now it's it's too large to clean in these detailed areas here. So I would click up here and I would make the size smaller. And so I can go back over here and see how big it is. See, I've got the circle shape to see if that fits because you want to make sure it's not 
cleaning too much stuff away. If I clean in here, then I've made these um, the spots in between here too thin. See the way that's that's not a good situation. I just did Command Z, Command Z. Um, so then I would have to make it a little bit smaller even if I really wanted to get a um, nice clean job into these pieces here, okay? Um, but it really isn't crucial for what we're gonna do and you'll see why in the end, okay? Another thing I wanna show you is when I'm cleaning something up sometimes, it's hard to see what I'm doing with this background, especially with this white, whoops, look what I just realized. See the way I've got this hole in here, right? So what I'm gonna show you is um, another way that I can look at the background without having this checkerboard because I didn't even notice that that was swallowing up there. So if I hit this button down here, that creates a new layer, okay? So I've got layer one here. And I'm going to zoom out here a moment and I can, with this square tool, I can go and select the whole page and then I can fill it with a color. So I go up to edit, fill, and you can fill it with white or um, black or 50% gray or if you have a foreground or a background color selected. I actually seem to have a little bit of a gray color selected so I could go and fill that. Now it's covering that, so all you need to do to switch layers is just drag the layer down. You see, I just click on it and I, whoops, I click and I drag, and the blue line tells you when you can drop it down, okay? So here you can see that I've got, that rug isn't doing a great job there. So I'm going to use my history. So your history are all the different levels that you've worked on something. So this can bring it back to um, where I hit the clear. See, you can see I have this these sections here. Um, so I can go back to Magic Wand. I still have some selected, so I can go to Deselect. So I'm going to go back and get my Magic Wand, and I'm going to make it 10, because 12 was grabbing too much. Let's see. All right, so now if I look more carefully, it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. So if I hit delete, oops, uh, when I went back all those steps, I went past where we clicked on background and made a separate layer, okay, or sorry, a transparent layer, and now I can delete. Okay, so what I wanna show you um, about creating a new layer. So you can click this button here to create a new layer, or you can also go up to the hamburger and say new layer. Either one of those will give you a new layer, okay? So if you wanna delete a layer, you click on that layer and you hit the garbage can and you say yes. All right, so here I have layer one. I'm gonna bring layer one down below layer zero, which is the layer that I have my rug on. You can also label the layer, layers just by clicking on here. So I can say rug. And so that's how I know it's on, on that level layer. So here I'm on the lower layer. I'm going to drag across this whole page. I'm going to say image, um, up in edit, say image, fill. So edit, fill. And I'm going to pick that foreground color, but you can, if you don't have color, just pick 50% gray. And there's my gray. And so it's showing me this background so that if I wanted to go in here and clean up, you get a better idea of what it looks like. So um, I could go in here with that eraser tool now, which it's so small, it's hard to see. Um, oops, not on the wrong right layer. So that's one thing too, you have to make sure you're on the right layer. And I can go in and um, erase here. Now see, you see this little spot here? The reason that exists is because um, I'm going to go back up to my um, 
history again, and I'm going to go back where I hit fill. So if I am on this layer and I forget what I'm doing and I go and I take a big chunk out, say I select something thinking I'm taking a big chunk out of this rug and I hit delete, it has deleted the layer behind. Okay, so sometimes you do something you don't see, it's because you're on the wrong layer. And that happens to me still all the time because um, you're so involved with what you're doing. So if something doesn't happen, one of the things you want to do is check and make sure you don't have a different layer selected. And if you do, you want to make sure you didn't do any damage to that layer. So if I were to hide this and see that I would marked something up when I thought I was marking on the, the rug. Okay, so example. So if I were on this layer and I've got this eraser tool and I start cleaning in here, and I'm not, it looks like I did the job, but then if I hide this rug, I've actually been cleaning up on the wrong layer. So I can go up to my histories and go back here. So now I'm going to, again, go back to the layers. I am on the rug layer. I am on the um, eraser tool and I can go in and check. And so the reason why I sometimes put this background here is if I'm doing something um, that 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 checkerboard is distracting, um, it's nice to have something that, that helps you manage this. That's my own little secret there. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is we are going to go to the bench. Oops, not that bench. I'm going to go to the bench that I retouched. And I'm going to drag over this image here. I don't need all that extra background. And I am going to copy it. So you can go copy or command C. Copy. And then I'm going to the room. And I'm going to paste it in place. Now it's quite large, isn't it? Oops, and I can see I didn't do a perfectly clean job of um, cleaning that up. So I am going to now use um, the transform tool. So that's command T, or if you go up into um, edit and you say transform, that will give you the transform tool. And I'm going to transform into the distort. So when I'm in distort, I'm gonna hold down the shift key to start with so that, whoops. Um, instead of doing that, I'm going to go to just scale. Sorry, jumped ahead of myself. Um, I'm going to scale it so it fits better into this space. Okay. And then I'm going to go to um, transform and I'm going to flip it horizontal because I'm going to put it up against this wall. Notice it's not aligning perfectly with this wall. Now I am going to go to distort. And when I distort, if I click one of these points, it's totally distorting the whole thing. So I am going to do that intentionally, where I'm pulling and pushing and pulling. And notice how this bench is getting wider toward the back and it's shorter in the front. Remember perspective. So I'm going to pull it into place. And now I'm comparing it to that doorway. If I zoom out, that bench looks like it would be up to my waist. So you want to, um, you, want to just, you want to shrink it so that it's the right perspective as well. I'm going to shrink it in here a little bit more. And that looks a little bit better to me. And I think I distorted it so that it's a little stretched out. And so when I get what I want, I go up to the check mark. And there's my bench. Okay. Stopping for now.